In this video, we're going to go over a little bit more as far as using the empty game component, but also using it as a trigger instead of a collider. So what I'm going to do here is I do have a script already pre-written that is going to show you as far as using it as a trigger. Now, a friendly reminder as far as when you're writing scripts, make sure that your class name syncs up to your file name. Now, because this is going to be assigned to a trigger element, I don't need to worry about play and update. So I removed those from the default as far as the overall C Sharp file was concerned. And I'm only going to just show as far as two main elements here where you have the on trigger enter, and it's going to be looking for some sort of collider, and then the on trigger exit, which is just like it sounds. So when the user enters the area of the trigger, I'm going to have it spit out the on trigger enter hit. When the user exits the trigger area, it's going to go ahead and send this to the debug log. But what goes into actually making this? For demonstration's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a 3D cube. And what I'm actually going to name this as is plate. Since you may run into times whenever you're working in a game environment where you're going to want some sort of plate interaction for the user to work with. So I'll go ahead and make this a little bit larger. But there's one catch here, and that is we want the plate to still keep its overall collider. We don't actually want it to have to remove that or double up on that. Because if we assign it to the actual plate itself, uh, it's not going to trigger for us. So I'm actually going to do two things here. So I've made the plate here, make it a little bit bigger. And just so that you can see it too, I'm going to grab a material here and place it on there. But now what I'm going to do is right click on the plate and hierarchy. And I'm going to choose create empty. And I'm going to name this just trigger object. Again, you can name this whatever you like, but just for demonstration's sake so that you can see the connection between the two, I'm going to call it that. And now having that empty game object selected, I'm going to come over to the inspector, and once again, we're going to go to the old reliable box collider. And I'm going to edit my collider here. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. One of the things whenever you're working with a collider, just so that you're aware, especially when you're working with a trigger, you want to be very cautious as far as the placement where you really, if it's something that you want the user to actually step on, we need to make sure that this bottom area of the trigger will actually interact with the player's feet. So that's something to just keep in mind as far as whenever you're working with your object. So I could actually bring this down a little bit. There we go. So notice what I'm doing, though, is I didn't actually work with the box collider of the plate, but instead I went and used the trigger object's box collider here. And I made that a little bit higher so that when the player enters it, they're going to trigger it. Now here's the other catch, is in previous examples when we've been working with the box collider, we actually just wanted it to be something that the user would actually hit whenever they walked into it. With a box collider, however, you also have an is trigger option, which is important whenever, if we come over into the C sharp here, that you want to have the on trigger enter and on trigger exit calls. So for this, for the trigger object, I'm going to come over under the inspector and make sure is triggered is clicked. And from here now, I can go back into my assets and I had made a script folder. And here's my little trigger demo that all it's going to do is just spit out some information to the, to the log for us. And the catch here is make sure that when you click and drag the script, you're putting it on the trigger object, not the plate itself. So now when I hit play, and let me go ahead and I'm going to open up our console, kind of spin around here for our little guy. If I walk over here, there you can see on the output, on trigger enter hit, on trigger exit hit. So that's the basics there as far as working with a trigger element. And this can lead to a lot of interesting things as far as animations, but also to as far as interactivities, teleportations, all sorts of other core game elements that you might want to build in Unity.